Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster Podcast. It's new series day at the Taskmaster Podcast. Always an exciting day. The children all rush out into the street. They're so excited. They're so giddy. They all get their all four ready. They all get their all four ready, the children, and they watch it in the street. They shout, it's a new series! It's a new series! And they all jingle their bells. Because today we are starting to talk about series six of Taskmaster, the first series with ten episodes. This will be ten weeks of chatting about this brilliant new lineup to us. Uh, the wonderful Tim Vine, who we'll be speaking to today, spoiler warning, uh, Alice Levine, Asim Chowdhury, Russell Howard, and, of course, Lisa Tarbuck. It's a great series. It always is. Uh, it's lovely to watch it back. Uh, and we're going to chat to Tim today about episode one of series six. Do get your questions in. If you have any questions for any of the other guests that we might have on, uh, we're going to have a mix of hopefully more people from that series, previous Taskmaster contestants from other series, and just massive Taskmaster mega fans. So any questions you have in general or about series six or about a specific task, taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com is the email address for you. But for now, this is a brilliant Tim Vine talking to me about Taskmaster Series 6, Episode 1. Welcome, Tim Vine, to the Taskmaster podcast. Oh, Ed, what an absolute pleasure to relive some uh, wonderful memories. Well, it's lovely to have you on because it's the first time uh, we're talking about Series 6 on the, on the Taskmaster podcast. Very right. exciting to start, always exciting to start talking about a new series. Great, excellent. Well, I'm happy to be here and to see you. Good, excellent. Well, That's this a is good this start. Is a, a lovely start, isn't it? It's such a lovely start. Um, so yeah, this is episode one uh, of series six. Now, Tim, of course, uh, we need to ask you a few questions generally about your experience on the show. Had you yes. had you seen much of Taskmaster before you agreed to appear on the show? Well, do you know, the first time I saw it was actually a trailer, and I, and I and even from the trailer, I, it popped up, and I think John Richardson was in. Was that an early series that John was in? I'm trying to think. It was yes, quite series, early on, really. series two. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I saw. So I saw this trailer. I thought, blimey, I'd love to do that. It just seemed they were just doing some nonsense in the garden. I think. Yeah. It looked very physical and silly. I thought that looks great, um, and then, and I sort of was hoping for you know that someone would ring up and go, "Do you want to do it?" And it sort of didn't really happen because that was series two. So it was a little while. And so eventually when I was asked, oh, yes, I'm still on that list of people that sometimes <laughs> start to get asked to do things. Um, so, uh, and I didn't really know much about it other than, than uh, a trailer and having seen a couple of, uh, a couple of episodes, you know, but, uh, but I mean, you can't really be prepared for, for because the tasks are all different anyway. So. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you were probably always on that list. I know that Alex in particular is a, is a mass, is a massive fan of yours. And, and oh, bless about him, how much yeah, well, I'm a big stuff. fan of his. <laughs> Well, you were great. I thought it was very exciting when you were announced. I thought, yeah, Tim's Tim's made for it because you you embrace the silly. Yes, well, I try to, yeah. And and the lovely thing about it, and I'm sure lots of people who have been on said the same thing to you, is it's lovely not to have to remember anything. I mean, you just literally they uh, uh, they put you in a little sort of holding area, and every now and again they go, "We've got another task for you," and you wander out into whatever they've got to offer you. You haven't you're not you're not scrambling around going. And this is the line I've got to remember of this bit, you know. You can just yeah. mess them out, so it's great. And what's I, I always found it quite refreshing as well, because obviously, as comics, our, our thing is we need to do something and then get that instant feedback straight away. And it's that constant mm. worry of doing the next thing and, God, I hope people like that. I hope people like that. But with Taskmaster, you get to do something and then you don't see the results of it for months. And it's quite no, nice. No, exactly. And you have that great moment in the studio where, where Alex introduces a task and you all have the kind of, Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> and you all look at each other, you know. And that is a, a, a genius bit of the show as well is the fact that 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 taskmaster rule about you you mustn't speak to each other about these tasks. Yeah. Um, and so you really sit in, in a line in the studio on the on the day when when they start doing the studio things. And it's just great fun because you're all looking at each other going, oh yeah, and you realise you're sitting with four people who also did the same thing. And the, the crew, I remember saying uh, to to me at the time and I'm, and again this is, I'm sure they said to everyone but but uh, it said that it's a, it's a strange thing but they that these same tasks come up people make quite quick decisions and they always make different decisions yeah it's very it's very odd isn't it i mean that happens yeah. a few times in this uh, in this episode i think there's things where you think well they've made they've decided that as if it's the only possible course of action exactly well and you kind of do feel that way when you make the decision you feel you, you your worry actually is the uh, is this is original you know is it, but actually people tend to go off you know 
in their own different paths. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, this is a very, a very good episode to kick off with. I mean, this the the reaction of people sat in the studio going, "Oh God, this one." It seems to mainly be Asim in this episode. <laughs> he was great. Absolutely he was fantastic. Great. Did you know? Yeah. Did you know many of the, uh, many of the other contestants before you started? No, the I show? didn't. I, I'd never met Asim before. I'd never met Alice before. Um, Russell, I'd I'd met a few times doing gigs and things. Um, who was the other one? Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa as well. Oh, Lisa, sorry, the winner, the winner. <laughs> Goodness sake, Vine, come on. Um, oh, and she was, and that she was very, very good. Yes. Very, very, we sort of, we, you sort of got to realise early on, you think to yourself, oh, she's very, very smart, very witty and, you know, everything, it was, there was nothing sort of, uh, there was, there was often a really good sort of laugh involved in what she did, you know, she, it wasn't just, nonsense you think oh that's very clever as well you know yeah she's very she's very smart and very calm mm. as well in all her tasks she's just yes. she's very she's the one who's like I, this is what i'm going to do this is the way i'm mm. going to do it and i'm absolutely confident about it yeah I'm, and i'm not sure which episode it was where it was me asim and lisa and we were uh and it was like some sort of a treasure hunty type thing yeah. which i think you had to then work out you're supposed to hop on the ground 20 times or something. and uh I mean, it was absolutely, me and Asim looked absolutely clueless. And Greg made a good point straight when we came back. He said, you see what women have to deal with, you know? We just looked like a couple of Inspector Clusos in there while she was working it out. That is a legendary task. Just Lisa, I think, says, oh, maybe it's hop. Maybe we have to hop. And you and Asim are going, oh, I can't, don't know what we've got to do here. And then she just starts hopping and that's the end of the task. It's brilliant. Um, so you must have enjoyed the show, Tim. You're talking about it very fondly. Yes, very much so. Very much so. I always say to people that it's, you know, if you ever get asked to do it, you must do it because it's, uh, it's, it's just, it is so much fun. I mean, it, 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 when you when you're doing the task, it really does go to. We all like to be the centre of attention a bit. And when you film the task, you, you're, you're there in this house with the, the crew, who are all lovely people, and Alex, who's lovely, and you're sort of just messing about all day long. The other contestants aren't even there, so you're the centre of attention for the day. You have a nice <laughs> lunch together. Everyone's really kind. <laughs> so it's it's just great fun. It's just a silly silly thing to be doing. And as I say, it's it, the joy of it, partly, is just the the not having any pressure to... There's nothing you're being expected to bring yeah. to the table. You just bring whatever you think of at the time. You know? totally. And that might freak some people out, but to me, I you know i think to comics it's just a nice release to just mess about yeah i think you're right um talk us through i mean there are a couple of things i want to talk about generally before mm. we get we get into this episode um talk us through the outfit decision because it's one of the great taskmaster <laughs> outfits i'd say <laughs> no fielding um he had a great costume didn't he and he i did. thought he to myself, the, yeah yellow the yellow sort of jumpsuit with a skeleton painted on it yeah that's right yeah yeah and i thought i think i need to get, i think i need a costume i think i will get i, I didn't want to just turn up wearing a tracksuit you know um, and actually, and actually, everyone kind of wears a, a costume, don't they? I think that's now a sort of a thing. You have your signature. Yeah, it's um, a bit more of a. It. It's a bit more of a decision. I think this was probably one of the last series where there were quite a lot of contestants just wearing quite regular clothes, which made yours stand out even more when when you're introduced <laughs> yeah. at the top well, of this episode and everyone's just <laughs> just wearing like just normal clothes you'd find in a shop, and then you walk out wearing a safari suit with. Yeah, with well, the actually, hat. they had. One of the things I think they had to keep doing, and I, I don't, and, and to answer your question, I don't really remember making the decision exactly. I just must have made quite a quick decision in a party shop. Um, but uh, but one of the things that they, that they that they had in the edit process, I think, was the fact that when when we're all sitting there in the with a studio audience watching a show, and and the the tasks are done, then each time I used to walk out to a task wearing the safari suit, it used to get a laugh from the audience. Yeah. But of course, once you're sort of you know three episodes in and it's a different audience every time. that's no longer doesn't make yeah. sense anymore because we've seen it but each time the audience goes, what the? You know? <laughs> so I, I was quite pleased that it's sort of uh you know it's nice to wear something isn't it yes yeah it is it is i i mean i i, I also had a sort of more of a sort of unique outfit when when i did it uh, yeah, what I, did you wear? Because I can't remember. I, I wore all all denim, like all horrible stonewashed denim <laughs> with, a, with a bolo tie. Um, <laughs> so it was just more of a horrible outfit. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, think, I think yours... I was, yeah, that, that could be mine. Could be described like that as well by some people. 
Yours was great fun, and it actually came back. Actually, to... I tell you what, I've, on the subject of it, I'm, I can I'll show you. I know this is uh, we're not visual at the moment, but I'm wearing the shoes I wore on. These are the trainers that I wore oh, on wow. Right, <laughs> I'm sort of almost in the costume. Well, of all the things you could have picked from that outfit to wear in normal life, I'm glad it's the trainers, Tim. <laughs> yeah, yes, it doesn't really get a big reaction. Um... <laughs> So let's kick off with the with the prize task. Uh, which, yes. Uh, in, for the first episode of Series 6, is Best Liquid. Did you enjoy mm. doing the prize tasks, Tim? I loved it, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, in fact, early on in the in the series, I, I, won, I think I won a couple of them quite early on. So I felt like it was a round I, I was quite pleased about. It took me a while to win a, win a normal round, but I seemed to sort of do quite well with a couple of the tasks, uh, the, um, uh, the prize tasks. Yeah, um, I, I think, but uh, I think that makes sense because, as I, I feel like you've got a lot of weird stuff in your house because you've got so many of those props that you use for your show, <laughs> yeah. where you'll just buy things or have things made and then write the jokes about them afterwards. Yes, there's there, there's an element of that that goes on. Yeah, yeah. And one of the, um, uh, and I'm jumping to another episode now, but uh, one of the tasks was uh, things that are scary in your kitchen, mm. and uh, and I um, and I chose a cupboard door that would occasionally fall out and hit me on the head well i put that that cupboard has now been reattached and feeling like i wanted to, to it was a sort of special door you know having been on taskmaster i've actually yeah. written on the inside of it this cupboard door appeared on taskmaster <laughs> episodes and i put the date on it <laughs> so when they tear this house down someone will go oh look <laughs> what a lovely memento for them i hope they don't get rid of it i hope yeah, exactly you got to put that behind perspex like in a museum or something that'd be great yeah well i think you'd just be there until as i say you know they, they uh you know i die and then someone has to clear all the junk out and while they're pulling all the covered doors out i go oh look at this he's written on the back of a door <laughs> my brother will go in the skip for the rest of it <laughs> <laughs> i think the, the the they'll probably the cupboard door won't make much difference when they're finding all those props anyway. Those are probably no, be the headlines. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they find the candy floss wig or whatever. Um, so let's talk about best liquid. Uh, let's talk yes. about yours first, Tim, because you said you won a few early on. This is one of the ones that you won. Uh, yeah. Because you grabbed Greg's attention with this straight away. You can see Greg's face light up. You went with fizzy benelin. Yeah. Um, Which I thought was a, a really clever idea. And because and, uh, and I, because uh, I thought it genuinely would work, would work. but uh, it, it actually, it sort of curdled when I attempted it. <laughs> it was disgusting. But I did try a bit of it. But it just, I thought the whole thing would be fizzy, but Benel in flame. Yeah. Um, but actually, it was just like a kind of, turned into like a kind of yogurt. <laughs> it's horrible. That doesn't get mentioned in the show. I feel like you, you, it, you, the points would have got knocked off if you'd said, well, it's actually <laughs> yeah, turned yeah, into a I sort of yogurt. If I'd said it was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I th yeah, no, maybe... I think Greg saw it as something that could genuinely be sold in shops. Yeah, I think if, I think if you took some of the sort of medicinal stuff out of it and you just had the flavour and the fizz, mm. I definitely think that could be sold in shops. I mean, you said yeah, that you maybe. poured out half and then filled up the rest with fizzy water. I think you need to go soda stream if you're going to make it properly, right? Yeah, you're right. But the, but the thing about soda stream is that you do require quite a lot of um, the, you know whatever liquid you're using, and yeah. benelin is not not a lot. To, you'd only be that high up in the soda stream if you put the whole of a benelin. Yeah, you know, well, you're going to need to invest. There. You don't yeah. need to buy loads yeah. of benelin, Tim. Loads of benelin, yeah. Yeah, that's the key. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I thought it was great. It was that, that was a, a brilliant prize. And yeah, it's sort of, it's fun. It's silly. And yeah, really tickled Greg's nostalgia, uh, mm. which I think I think is key. Um, yeah. Other end of the scale in terms of sort of fun, uh, Alice Levine brought blood in. Yes. Um, Where was it blood from? I don't remember. She said it was her blood. But I don't. Then that wasn't discussed any further. I'm not surprised. So I, I, I don't know if it she was, missed a trick. She should have gone for fizzy blood. She should have had fizzy <laughs> blood. Exactly. <laughs> That's the only thing that could have beaten fizzy benelin is fizzy blood. <laughs> you could probably produce that uh, naturally if you did some diving and came up too quick. <laughs> <laughs> People with the bends. That's yeah. who. Uh, that's who's producing. Benzolin. <laughs> Tim, I'll be honest, we're, we're nearly 15 minutes into the record and that's the first pun. I was getting worried. Oh, no, sorry. I'm not sure benzolin could be used in my act anywhere else. It's too much explaining. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a lot of... Have you seen Tim's new show? He does a 25-minute set-up to the first yeah. pun, which is benzolin. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blood and cough mixture pun. <laughs> Ed Campbell has to come on and talk to him about it. It's really, it's really weird. It takes a long time to get there. I'm not sure it's worth it. Um, but Blood, I thought was good. She's thinking around best liquid, of course. Mm. We all, we all need it. That doesn't. Make yes, sense. definitely. That um, was a good one. Lisa uh, brought in water, but the world's cleanest water from a place in Chile, which right. I think was harshly judged. Greg, uh, Greg seemed to suggest that it was uh, she'd not tried or she'd not. She'd not really right. made an effort, but she did import this water from Chile. I think I think that's pretty impressive. Right? Yeah, certainly. She said said, said she did. Certainly. The, uh... <laughs> Are you suggesting? <laughs> Tim you could find something similar here to to, to fool everyone. <laughs> you you suggesting she got a bottle of Evian and put a Chilean label on it? That would be more difficult. Yeah, not at all. I, I'm absolutely certain it was flown across from Chile. <laughs> it might have just been Chile water. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Asim uh, brought in his own peanut dust vape juice. Um, which oh, yeah. Re- yeah, relates to his uh, his character, your buddy G, uh, in People Just mm. Do Nothing, uh, who sells peanut dust as a business idea. It's, it's, mm. it's in the first episode of People Just Do Nothing. It's very funny. And they, mm. he made his own vape, uh, vape liquid, uh, uh, peanut dust flavour. As a fan of People Just Do Nothing, I thought this was great. Um, mm. Are you a vapor, Tim? Uh, no, no, I'm a, I'm a human. <laughs> Are you a vapor? Now that, now that has got some possibilities. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Drop that down. I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. you can make something out of that. E-cigarettes. Yeah. I said. Uh, he said, "Are you a vapor?" I said, "No, I'm a." It's whatever the next bit I'm is. A solid, I'm a solid. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, exactly. I'm a solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the the vape juice didn't do very well, and it only got uh, one point. I feel like it should have got more. I thought it was quite inventive. Yeah, um, and very topical as well to go with vape. Yes, yeah. Although and of I course, maybe... something you will talk about later on with Asim. He did, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest. Uh, and it wasn't an opening task. No, it was that thing of the callback thing to a previous episode. I thought it was oh. very clever about him being a vegetarian. The uh, announcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the announcement. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, great. It is. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I think maybe, in, rather than it being topical, it feels like it's slightly ahead of its time. I think vaping really mm. only maybe came into its own in 20, 2019, 2020, and this was 2018. I think we were maybe six, six months ahead of the curve with Asim's vape juice. Yeah, you might be right. Maybe that's why it only got one point. Mm. Um, well, Russell Howard was, I think, not, not, but not ahead of the times with Brute for Men. Um, probably slightly behind the times. <laughs> um <laughs> I brute though what... was did you know brute, uh, unbelievably Elvis used brute did he yeah brute thirty three yeah. Yeah, yeah will you be do you splash yourself with brute thirty splash it all, all over now do your I tribute don't. your tribute tour no that was a nice link though to talk now in Thank great you. depth about my tour no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no I don't no I just uh, um, yeah whatever I would put on would be washed away by the torrent of sweat that I produced as soon as I go on anyway so it wouldn't work <laughs> and no one's getting near enough to, to other than me to actually smell me so so are you, you're in like a plastic outfit though right the... yeah it's plastic yeah um so it's I sort of uh I make a joke about uh, I say what well, um doing in my doing my best Elvis voice I say uh, um but sweat just kind of builds up in here you know it's, it just doesn't it doesn't go anywhere you know? at the end of the night I bring the zip down it's like taking the front off the hoover dam <laughs> oh i love it which the audience obviously are delighted by the imagery of i'm sure it doesn't put them off at all <laughs> um well yes but yeah we're sidetracking but yeah brute 33 is a, is a great smell as far as elvis is concerned yeah. well great. not not uh, according to greg davis uh, no. who um, said he'd had an awkward experience with brute for men uh, and refuses to elaborate on it uh, even though Russell <laughs> asked him to, and then Greg really laid down the law and said, "I'm the taskmaster, Russell." It's like he was slapping him down early doors, being like, "You don't host this one, Russell." <laughs> well, I don't think you yeah, needed. I think Russell was just asking the question between the two of them, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> a tussle, <laughs> yeah. manly tussle. Yeah. Uh, well, it was it was one point for Russell, one point for Asim, three points for Lisa's chili and water. Uh, Alice Levine's <laughs> blood gets four points, but of course, it was five points for the fizzy Benelin. Well, I was thrilled to get off to a good start. Russell, what have you brought in? I think the best liquid in the world for me uh, would have to be uh, Brute for Men. Um, 
It's an aftershave, there it is. Yeah. And oh, nice. I remember splashing it all over myself for the first time in 1988. I was eight and my dad gave me some and said, get some of that on you. And kind of splashed it on, went into school and just... Your dad is Phil Mitchell from East End. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only aftershave you could buy when I was a young man. Which is why I didn't lose my virginity until I was 35. <laughs> so this is task one proper. Um, perform the best stunt using this wheelbarrow. You have one hour. Your time starts now. Trick. I think tricky task. Mm. There's so like there's so many things you could do, I guess, but also very little you can do, Tim. Mm. I, I can reveal something about that actually, because I did. I did. I, I, did I call it the ravine? So I do apologize. Sledge, rav Sledge ravine. Yes. Sledge ravine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But there was a task we'd filmed before that hmm. that didn't make it into the show. And it was one where we were asked to do like a, a, a motivational speech thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I did this thing and threw myself back into a hedge. And, and there was this, and the hedge didn't catch me at all. Uh, I sort of says, throw yourself back into life. Blah, 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 and I threw myself back into and it's thinking the hedge would catch me. I went straight through it. And there was a rock like that. You know? Oh, my God. And I went, ah, like that. And I landed on that. And I was lying there like that. And I, and I had that thing which, which, you know, whenever anyone falls over, you think, is anything broken? You know, because yeah. it was a bit of a shock. And I thought, no, I think I'm all right. Because I could have broken my back. Yeah. I was thinking about one of those moments. You know? And, uh, you know, Alex sort of lent in his ear. And said, yeah, yeah, no, I'm all right. But anyway, the following task was a stunt with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> and, and I'm sort of hobbling around a bit with my back thinking, God, blimey. So I, it was a bit of a sheepish attempt at well, Sledge that, Ravine. That makes a lot a lot of sense then, looking at Sledge Ravine now with the context <laughs> that you'd nearly broken your back on a sharp rock. Exactly, but, yeah. I didn't really... I mean, I, it wasn't something that I took a great run-up for, Sledge no, Ravine, was it? <laughs> you just sort of you sort of slid down the wheelbarrow onto some cushions while Alex threw tennis balls at you. Yes, um, and the only note I wrote for this was uh, Tim. What was this? But now we know it was it was you <laughs> yeah. trying to heal your back. It was me thinking to myself, "I'm going to do this, but I but I just need to be slightly. I don't think this is the moment no. to be mid air with a with a wheelbarrow." <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but you still you still didn't come bottom in this task, despite the uh, no. despite the the, the poor sled ravine. Um, Asim managed to get bottom place. He attached the wheelbarrow to a bike rode through a fake brick, brick wall, picked up a dummy uh, and took it to the caravan. And it was all in slow motion. I think Greg makes the point in saying it's very rare that something can be in slow motion and still look terrible. <laughs> because he seems to, he saves this dummy. He's rescuing this dummy, but he's, she's just sort of stood there, the dummy. She's not yes. in any distress whatsoever. And I look, I thought it was fun. Look, it, it obviously wasn't a great stunt, but he thought it through. There was a story to it. Mm. It made more sense. No offence, Tim. It made more sense than Sledge Ravine. Sledge Ravine, I agree. Looking back at Sledge Ravine now, I think it was only the tennis balls that saved me from last place. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that, that extra sort of cherry on the cake, you know. But I can see Asim as, a, a, as an action star. I can see him in an action film, for sure. 100%, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I would disagree with Greg, and I'd say that, that, uh, that it, it looks great in slow motion. You know, I think anything in slow motion... Looks yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's impressive if anything to do something in slow motion, and it just looks like the sort of speed of someone walking. Yes, it's that, yeah. great. I think that, yeah. I think that deserves points. Um, yeah. Only Lisa, perhaps walking in slow motion would be a bit dull, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa uh, made a zip wire and turns the wheelbarrow into a sort of fly creature uh, and sends it down the wire. Um, uh, delivering chocolates. I mean, this has got a really good example of Lisa's brain just working mm. differently to everyone else. And because she, she mm. comes up with this idea immediately, <laughs> and she just said, "Oh well, we'll turn this into a creature, and we'll send that down." Probably chocolates were delivering that, isn't it? What I was just, the creature? What, it was what? like it looked like a big fly. It had sort of big yeah. eyes. I think it was supposed to be like a giant fly, but I could have stood there for mm. hours and never thought of, "Oh, I'll do a giant fly delivering chocolates." No, exactly. I think the delivering chocolates you know, actually something actually happened. It's got, you know, there's a uh, humanitarian side to it. It's it's yeah. helping. Sledge yeah. Ravine was very just self indulgent, helped nobody. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's always thinking of other people, isn't she? Yes, she is. <laughs> She's working out a new system for the UN where mass. I mean, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? If you're hungry and then a massive fly delivers a bar of chocolate, that would put me right off. 
Yes. No, that would be uh, certainly <laughs> unusual. Yeah. Um, but she's, I mean, she's so great. She's so sure of herself. It's perfect. Um, mm, definitely. Russell, uh, Russell the, makes it as dangerous as possible, his stunt, by swigging some gin, lighting a cigarette, getting into a wheelbarrow with a toy shark and crashing it into a wheelie bin full of rubber bricks. I think he calls the bin of doom. Yes. Um, He'd really thought this through. I really liked it. Was that the one. winner? Did he win this one? He got or four not? points. Alice won four this points. one. I know. So, okay, right. Yeah. Um, and a- Alice's was pretty spectacular, I think. But I really liked that Russell had thought it through. You could see all the additions mm. he'd made along the way. Um, yeah. And just his closing words in it, which I think makes all stunts good. He just looked down the camera and said, now that's a stunt. Yeah, yeah. And he's sort of puffing on a cigarette. Puffing on a cig, yeah. I mean, it took ages to light Alex's cigarette, which... I liked even more the build up, <laughs> the tension. It was great. I loved that one. But Alice's, I think, yeah, I always, this is one of the ones I really remember from this series as well. Uh, now, if anyone... Ed, you must remind me because I, I didn't do my homework recapping. This was with the legs and the car, was it? Yeah. Oh, goodness me. Well, I mean, there we are. That was an absolute belter. You, yes. you, you know, the second you see it, well, that's that one. one. Move on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the the yeah the the wheelbarrow. She was sat in the wheelbarrow with a rope attached to her feet. Alex drives away, and pull, pulls off her legs completely. Mm. What a what a brilliant surprise! It's so funny. It's so great. Yeah. Really yeah, shocking. Really, really great. Well, that's an example of. I mean, blimey! The second if you think of that, if you if that's one of those ideas that comes to you like that, that you must be you must think oh, that's great. I mean, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Because it's so. I mean, I, I, where was the where were the legs taken? Obviously from a dummy, but I wonder where the dummy was. Well, in, I think the, 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 dummy, the dummy was in the caravan, I think, mm. because I, I'm assuming it's the same dummy that Asim rescues. Uh, yeah. So, you know, he, he put all that effort into rescuing the dummy and then Alice pulled its legs off. Yeah. Um, which is a real shame. Uh, poor dummy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's spectacular that. It's so, it's mm. so, so good. And any time Alex is asked to drive his car, I enjoy it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're just reminded that Alex drives himself there because he's not a diva. <laughs> 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 it's always great when Alex gets involved in tasks because uh, he, he, there's something very, he, there's something very sort of uh, earnest about it, him wanting to do well with them. You know, he sort of yeah. He's like, well, okay, yes, of course. It's, it's a kind of it's like a, a sort of really willing butler, isn't he? Yeah, he totally is, and I don't think he ever wants to be accused of deliberately not helping someone. Yes, uh, 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 to reduce their points. So I think he really wants to do well if he's asked. Yeah, and quite often. And it, is like, it's, it, it is one of the constant joys of the show. Is that is that constant? Uh, um, yes, Jim. Yes. <laughs> well, no, I. Da, 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 you know, it's like, yeah. It, it, it's like he's seen it all before. Yeah. And, uh, absolutely. And it's just, you wonder what I'd love to see the. Uh, do, you, do you get to look at the, the what he's writing down in specifics? I mean, I know it's lots of, lots of timings and things, aren't there? Yeah, I think it must be timings or, you know, you hope he's not writing insults or anything like that. Yeah, or a letter home. You know, yeah. Comes to the <laughs> <laughs> they won't let me out. <laughs> um, so it was one point for Asim, two points for you, Tim, three points for Lisa, four points for Russell, and the big five for Alex. We, we established a baseline with yours. Yeah. It was shit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the question is... <laughs> Did Tim Vine limbo under what? it? I don't know. Did he come back round because it was so shit? That he yeah. Had... Also, yeah. also, mine had my name in it because Vine is in the word Ravine. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, Ravine. I've just oh. thought of that now. I didn't think of that. Right. <laughs> and my middle name is Sledge, coincidentally. But... <laughs> Task two. Make the highest tower using only what is in the bowl, which was lemons. You may wield the knife a maximum of five times. You have ten minutes. Your time starts now. Very typically taskmastery using a word like wield, which you have to interpret. And I think they're hoping that you'll do something something odd and claim it's wielding and then have to argue it in the studio. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And, they, and I think the someone did talk about wielding as though it were. Yeah, like, I mean, what you did know. you when you first saw wield, what did you interpret that as? Uh, just hold. I was more <laughs> transfixed by the lemons, to be honest, <laughs> than the knife. <laughs> Utterly but it's, enchanted uh, yeah, by the lemons. You, you start thinking about it. It's like it is like one of those. Pu- it, there's lots of puzzle elements to these things that 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 you you look at you look back at sometimes when you're not under the uh, sort of pressure to think of something. In actual fact, you're not under pressure to go like that. They, it, Alex always says, "Have a bit of a have a bit of think about it." But none yeah. of us really want to stand there. 
three minutes thinking about it. So, so that's what makes us all think of stuff quickly, I think. Yeah. Because there's a camera like that. And even though they go, no, it's fine, just give it some thought. I, I don't know whether there's many people who go off and, you know, have a sit down for 10 minutes. <laughs> we all get on with it, don't we, straight away. But it's like, said, it is like those that, Tim, In this yes. one, you're really in no rush. Like you're... <laughs> Everyone else is sort of panicking a bit about the lemons and what to do with the lemons. And, you know, you're you're very sort of, you're like, I'll take this one, I'll squash it on there, see, see what happens. You're just having a nice day with some lemons. Yeah, well, as as with it, I've noticed that I often think I'm doing things quickly and actually I'm not doing it quickly at all. <laughs> and your, your poor shorts took an absolute pasting, didn't they? You were they squeezing did. those lemons and the lemon juice all, all over your bottom half. <laughs> that's right yeah that wasn't the that wasn't the task where i said something uh, where i uh, uttered son of a bitch or something was it or wasn't no it? i think that's later in the series because was um, it? because that was a big that was a big thing the fact well, that, that was front page news yeah yeah that you that tim vine <laughs> swore yeah and not even not even really a swear word really particularly no, not even no but, no but even for you that i mean for you that is the worst word isn't it i suppose um, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an email about your swearing later on, actually. I'll definitely ask you that question. Okay, yeah. um, but you sort of just squat. You didn't really use the knife particularly until the end, but you you squashed the lemons, hoping that you mm. could squash them down and, and build a tower. It seemed like quite quite a good technique. Yes, I thought so. The, the problem with... I thought that... I think I was transfixed by the just the thought of being able to balance them. Mm. more than the, the height because actually if you flatten something you do lose height i discovered yeah um <laughs> yeah. yeah i was i think I, I think i was more thinking about how do we make this if, i mean was it was it a, a, make it as tall as possible was that what the, yes the, the yeah, yeah. yeah 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 tall as tower yeah yeah so i i don't think i really i don't think i was really thinking much about the tallness more about like you say just flattening things making a tower in the first place exactly but- Hey, look, you you got the two points because uh, a pattern is emerging. Asim did mm-hmm. worse and saved you from the bottom. Um, <laughs> yes, because Asim started. He pro- he had a proper taskmaster meltdown, where just all logic completely defies you. Um, he started slicing the lemons in half and then just putting them back together. Pointless. Ridiculous. Absolutely pointless. Slice <laughs> the lemons in half, put them back together. They had a whole lemon again. Uh, he only made a tower. Except of they weren't joined together properly. Yeah, ex- except they were less stable. <laughs> he made the lemons less stable than they already were. Um, four centimetre tower, uh, unfortunately, or four inch tower. And one of the two. Anyway, he was bottom. Uh, hmm. And you, you managed a seven inch tower, which is great. Uh, Lisa uh, used the knife as well to create her tower. Eight inches. Very strong. I mean, again, she... She's not in any rush either, to be honest. She's she's very calm. No, well, when you when you're not being timed, it's sensible to take your time. But weirdly, it's you know lots of things you think about afterwards that you don't occur to you at the time. Yeah, you you think you know if you've just done a timed task and then the next one isn't a timed task, you're still sort of in timed task yeah, mode. Of course, you know? yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and it's just you're right. It's the pressure of the lights and the camera. Mm. And Alex stood there in a suit with a clipboard. You're like, oh, I've got with a do clipboard it doing his normal. Yes, well, no, oh, yes, Tim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alice, th- uh, this was very clever. I think Alice is super smart, actually, especially in this episode. Um, reads the task and says, "Well, it says I'm not. Al- I'm only allowed to wield this knife a certain amount of times. It doesn't mention any other knives." Yes. And she went straight out and got another knife from the kitchen. Very, yeah. very smart idea, and it very, really very smart that tower. And it's exactly the sort of thing that that Greg loves is that you know you've looked at the rules, you've applied the rules, and you've stuck to the rules, but yeah. you've been a bit clever by going around them slightly. A bit clever, exactly. Or some days, if he's in a bad mood, he hates that. So you never know. That's that's <laughs> the, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, but he's st- he, generally though he 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 does like it's a stickler for rules though, Greg, isn't he? So yeah. he will, you know. It, it, he he would sort of, I think he I think he's fair normally. Occasionally he just doesn't like someone, but, uh, <laughs> but normally he's fair about rules. rules. Yeah, I think so. Um, Russell Russell's tower. Now this I think this is controversial, Tim. Uh, right. If you remember Russell's tower, he he had the bowl and he stacked them up in the bowl to make it what uh, he yes. calls a diagonal tower uh, that was eleven inches. Now the rules of the task, Tim. I'll remind you, mm. were make the highest tower using only what is in the bowl. 
So he actually uses the bowl as I think there's an argument that it's a supporting structure, but mm. I would say it's part it's part of the tower. So you can't say mm. you can only use what is in the bowl when you're using the bowl because unless you believe that the bowl is in the bowl. I, I agree with you. I, I think that, that that's an example where he should have been disqualified. Yes. You know, <laughs> in a fair world, that's no out. It didn't happen that way, did it? It did it didn't happen, no. He was given the he was given the full eleven inches, the five points. At least mm. I think it should have been the height rather than the diagonal height because yeah. He's, he's, so in a way, I mean, in a way, I'd like to go slightly against what I said about Greg always being a stickler for rules because in that <laughs> situation, in that situation, he looked at the rules and thought, uh, well, I mean, you know, yeah, kind yeah. of. You know, it's, it was just he allowed a little more bending than I would have liked there. Yes. Quite, um, and I'm going to get plenty of tweets. I'm sure saying that I'm wrong, and it, Russell was allowed, and I'm sure it's great. But, um, mm. but yes, I'm willing to have that argument. I think he was only allowed to use what was in the bowl. The bowl mm. itself is not in the bowl. If you ask someone to empty the bowl, you don't want them to t- throw the bowl out. No. Okay. Well, there it would be go. like introducing a totally different item in as well. I mean, if yeah. you say using what is it? Using only what is in the bowl. Yes. So well, you couldn't have introduced another out item, and also a bowl isn't in a bowl. So you're right. Yeah, I suppose could you have? Yeah, you, could you have grabbed loads of things and put them in the bowl and then gone? Oh, those are in the bowl and then use them. I think you could have. That's I good. wish I'd thought of that as well. <laughs> well, it's a, <laughs> it's only four was years the knife too late. The, bowl at the, the knife wasn't in the bowl. I don't no. think, but you were allowed to wield the knife, so you may wield the knife. But yeah, I think I mean, it's very interesting what you just said there. Though I think that's true. If you'd have said. Uh, using only what is in the bowl, and then yeah. you put some things in the bowl and go, right, there's the bowl, and using only what is in the bowl, I will now make a tower. Yes. I think I think you've, there, there would have been an argument for that in the studio, I think, and mm. depending what mood Greg was in, I think you possibly could have got away with it. Nassim would have added more lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can I ask why? Because I was watching, I didn't understand. Why were you cutting them all in half and putting them back together? Mate, I don't know. This <laughs> is... I am a lemon, right? <laughs> so that's why I fucked it up. I'm a lemon. Blood and acid, title of your autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> it was like watching somebody have a breakdown on their Blue Peter audition tape. <laughs> task three. This is a great task. Um, wearing a hat, kiss the portrait of the taskmaster in the taskmaster's house. The hat must not come from the grounds of the Taskmaster's house. Closest to 30 minutes wins. Your time starts now. If you remember, Tim, uh, this is the one where you had to start off in a wardrobe, uh, blindfolded. I remember it's, it. It's the nearest I've ever got to knowing what it feels like to be kidnapped. <laughs> because they put you in the car in the yeah. house with a blindfold on and you're just driven somewhere. Yeah. And then you come out of a wardrobe. And uh, although I'm not sure if you were really kidnapped, anyone would bother with the wardrobe. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then you emerge in the field. And uh, this is this one was one of my this not I didn't share myself with glory here because I didn't read the task properly. You know, the, the, yeah. I just read it right immediately. Got to get back as soon as possible. But it says closest to thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, didn't I go understand closest that. to thirty minutes. I I just went back as quick as i could yeah i mean i understand that because why why would it why should it be closest to 30 minutes it feels like it's one of those tasks where you have to get back as quickly as possible and get a hand yeah. on the way and i think i might have done the same thing i might have panicked misread it and just plowed on regardless and just stalked yeah. back towards the house um so yeah that that was an, that was an issue and obviously they had to take your hat off you you had your safari hat but they had to take that off you because they, they took it off me using yeah. that hat um but look, it, it could have gone much worse because, as is now tradition, uh, Asim did worse. Yes. Uh, so you got two points, Asim got one point. Thank God for Asim in this episode, Tim. I'll tell you another, having spoken... Yeah, no, thank you. But, <laughs> I'm saying, but, uh, but the, the, I know I said to you a, a moment ago that I, I nearly broke my back falling through a hedge. I had yeah. another near-death experience on this one. And it's right. the, when we were walking back... I think it was this one. It was certainly, certainly the traffic lights, anyway, just outside where the Taskmaster house is. Um, I was about to cross the road, and, and I think Alex said, yeah, it's clear, or something like that. He was standing on my right, and yeah. I began to step across the road, and I just stopped myself, and a car went by, 
by Whoa. 70. And Alex went, oh, blimey, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and it was... Uh, <laughs> it was one of the... I wasn't wearing a blindfold, I hasten to add. <laughs> but uh, it was an, another one of those moments, you know, where, you, where in life you think, you know... Yeah. If something goes... I'm not sure how many points I would have got for that. No, they de- I think they would have cut that task, Tim, to be honest. I think they would have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you yeah. would have been disqualified because you wouldn't have made it back to the house. No, um, anywhere near 30 right. minutes. Or it would have, if it just sort of clipped you, it might have slowed you up enough to get a few more points. If you yes. were sort of yeah. dragging, your, dragging your mangled corpse back to the house. <laughs> I'll tell you something else I remember about this task. That uh, I, I remember that, that, that Russell rang his agent. Yes. Yeah, he rang he rang his agent <laughs> and um, asked for a car. And asked for a car. A genius a genius move in many ways. And that is that is a man who is not concerned with how that looked on TV. Mm. He just had he just had to do the task. Yes, that wasn't that wasn't great for his man of the people image. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I'd say to him is uh, Russell's agent is also my agent uh, and <laughs> and a lovely group of people they all are. And I had a real, I had a real thought that imagine if I tried to do that, and you just didn't pick up. Oh, Ima- yeah, when, exactly. when I was when I was doing Taskmaster, and there was just no answer, I was like, oh no. <laughs> well, see. you know what? They said, Sorry, Ed, we can't send you the car. Russell's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Russell's in the car. Yeah, the one car that just idles around London waiting for a call. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love the image of Russell in the back of the Uber doing a double thumbs up and said, let's yeah. roll, like it was the coolest thing in the world that he was in an Uber that his agent had called for him. It was very very funny. I mean, mm. one does think, just use Alex's phone to call an Uber. If Just mm. cut, cut out the middleman there. He's just showing off that his manager picks up his calls. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And did, did, did he ask to go, did he know where the house was at that stage when he asked for the, the car? Or was that part of the? No, but I guess, I guess his agent, the... I guess his agent does. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sorted it out. He just sorted it all out, which is yeah. great. Very jealous. It's um, amazing how because we're not that far from the house, but it's amazing how yeah how, how easy it is to be disorientated in an area you don't really know. Totally. Just I mean, to, you, you think for, you know all you've got to go on is the length of the car journey, actually, and that's probably a bit of a a uh, red herring as well. I don't know when they took me around the block a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, they, I think they spun, they, they, took, they took everyone around the block a fair few times, I think, to, yeah, to right. try and confuse you. Lying. Yes, you did, I thought you did, you did. You just, you just misread it, Tim. I think you would have been, mm. I bet you're very good at estimating times if you, if you knew that you had to get closest to 30 minutes. Yeah. Did no one have watches on them? No, all the watches were taken. Mm. That would have been, if everyone had missed that trick. That would have That's been... true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, we were wearing a watch. I, I was worried that there was some trick that maybe there was a hat on top of the wardrobe or there was a watch on top of the wardrobe. Yeah. Um, that would have been a clever idea, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or even if there had been a watch in the wardrobe. Yeah. Because yeah. you would look at you wouldn't think to bring it with you. You'd go, oh, well, that's, well, that's no use to me. And then you'd go off and then probably you'd be, you know, half a mile away by the time you realise, oh, actually, perhaps I should... Probably should have brought that watch. That yeah. watch with me, yeah. Yeah. Um, Asim, I mean, it's amazing what Taskmaster does to the brain because this is a classic. Asim decided to check to see if if he went through the wardrobe, then he'd end up back in the Taskmaster house. <laughs> he went back. He was like, it's not one of those things, is it? I better check. Because <laughs> you know, obviously, things. it's not going to be that, but it's worth it's worth a look, isn't it? I worth mean, a it... try. Well, you never know. I mean, it's, you know, the budget's going up every series, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it might have brought in some sort of hyperspace facility. <laughs> Because <laughs> people forget about this this thing, I think that he tried to get in that wardrobe to see if it would transport him back. Because uh, there's a it's similar. It reminds me of the in a more recent series. Moan Rizwan uh, uh, tried to put helium in an egg to float it up to the ceiling, and just thought he'd give that a go. It's that sort of logic where you think, oh, just give it a go, because otherwise, if it if it does work and I don't try, it, I'm going to look very silly. Yes, no, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but he's another. He misread it as well, Tim. So he he got back there in nine minutes. I mean, if it had been first back, he would have absolutely smashed it. Mm. And um, I was back in about ten or something, was I? Or yeah, like ten that? ten minutes forty. You estimated yeah. it in the twenties, um, but it, mm. it was ten minutes forty. There was that real. I remember in the studio the realization that I misunderstood the task. Watching, I think probably just watching Alice's thing when she arrived and just has, waits it out a bit by the front door. Yeah. Yeah, very, very impressive. 28 yeah. minutes 30 she did it in. Yeah. She just absolutely smashed this. 
she yeah. sort of seemed to get a camouflage hat off someone. She said, Elvin, mm. I, Elvin gave me his hat and then gets a lift in a sports car with someone called Simon. Mm. So she arrives in a camo hat looking like a rapper in a sports car, waits around mm. and then absolutely smashes it. 28 minutes 30. Mm. Well done. Simon, of course, has since turned out to have been her agent. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it frustrating that everyone apart from you and Asim used their agent? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Lisa, this is, I mean, I would watch a full show of this. Lisa just walked around for ages and had a lovely day. Yes, yeah, she did, didn't she? Yeah. She went on a nice stroll and said good morning to people uh, and pointed out trees she liked. And this is what I mean. She's just operating to the, she's walking to the beat of her own drum. Absolutely. And I think that she must have understood the task as well, because once you know it's 30 minutes, but not less than 30 minutes, then you can afford to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And totally. Take it. it is because it is a, especially if you know whereabouts you are in relation to the house, it, it is very much a leisurely stroll. It's a leisurely stroll and not a mad dash wearing a safari suit. Not at all. <laughs> so <laughs> it was one point for Asim, two points for you, Tim, again. I mean, I think that's happened in every task. Yeah, uh, so far. <laughs> three points to Lisa, four points to Russell, and five points to Alice. Very impressive victory. That was really, I really like that. Totally. It sort of felt like a BBC coastal walk. <laughs> I love the whole idea of being lumbered round, blindfolded and driven round. Mm. It just appeals. Yeah. And then <laughs> shut in. It does, because you've dread that, yeah, I'll crack this. Yeah. I felt really calm. But then I'm good as, in, soon, I'm good as in a soon crisis. as you were free, you just went for a stroll. <laughs> I, was, I was desperate to get out that morning. It was be a beautiful like day. You were saying hello to people. Yeah. You <laughs> commented on what a lovely day. You were like a sort of chilled headmistress. <laughs> <laughs> she stopped to compliment a tree. I know. <laughs> Uh, the first live task of the series. Sort the objects under the table in order of size. You must keep your elbows on the table top and your head in your hands at all times. The smallest object should be on your right, the largest object on your left, and they must all be in line under your table. Also, there must be no fruit in your lineup. If there is any fruit left under your table, you will be disqualified. You have 100 seconds. Did you enjoy doing the live tasks, Tim? I love the live tasks, yeah. Yeah, I love the fact that there's a... The... I think you get an energy off the audience with the live tasks, and and also it's because you because you're you're actually present with your competitors. It brings out the competition side of it that you haven't really tasted doing the other things. The other thing is you're you're in this mad world a lot of the time. And you don't know what's yeah. going on in relation to the other contestants. But uh, yeah, you know there was the one where you sort of rolling. Um, was it eggs trying to make eggs get near like a kind of egg golf thing that we played? Yeah, they're obsessed with um, eggs. Egg sure. bowls, I mean, yeah, egg bowls, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I always enjoyed that. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, you said. I think. I, I think this is what I mean. I think you take these sorts of things completely in your stride. Like, there's no, there's no pausing and going. Well, this is a bit of a weird thing to do. You're like, yeah, makes total sense. Here we go. Let's yeah, yeah, this. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, having been through all the tasks, the, the live tasks are the least weird thing of the lot normally. Yeah. Um, and obviously things like, I mean, you're obviously, a, you're a darts man. I know there was a, there was mm. a darts task later on uh, in the yes. show. So, yeah. you know, you're you're used to these sorts of things where you have to aim, your your aim is excellent. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I know, the, the, well, the darts task was, uh, I, that's another one I look back at and think, oh, I wish I'd, I'd do that one again. <laughs> but of course, for those, People who, I mean, I will just briefly mention the darts. The darts yeah, thing, you brought it up. It was either sixty darts from ten meters, yeah, um, three darts from one meter, um, or one dart. No, so three darts from the original seven yeah. foot nine and three quarters, uh, yeah, and then one dart from one meter. Yeah. Now, one dart from one meter has got to be out straight away because it's actually hard to go close to the board if you're used to being further away. Three darts, to be honest, with a bit of wind gusting even if you if you're quite good at darts the chances are all that's going to do is just narrow it down slightly so you're, you're just you're probably going to chuck them in the five and the one yeah you know? so he's probably going to be seven so you've got to go for you, anyone really. i think you put brister in that situation yeah he would go for 60 darts from from 10 meters yeah. and uh it's just a number yeah. well it's a numbers game isn't it darts it is. and i think i think that that that, that was it being timed was the problem with that. So it was, it was a lot of, was, I was rushing it. I, I was surprised how many times I had the line correct though. Yeah. Because I hit the pole. I kept hearing a ding, ding, yeah. ding. I kept hitting the pole with amazing regularity. 
but never the board. But uh, yeah, I would like not to go there. But yeah, but, so this last task that you're talking about now, yeah, is uh, anything that involves. Um, Actually, it's nothing to do with darts, is it? This one? I no, was sorry, say, I was just thinking some a lot of the throwing. tasks. Yeah, the the accuracy in throwing comes into a lot of the live tasks. This it one, does, but not this one. This one was all more about your ability to discover what's large and what isn't without your the use of eyesight. Yeah. <laughs> And there was a little flash of Russell's uh, true competitive nature there where uh, I think Lisa took her shoes off earlier than him. Uh, and he, and he <laughs> sort of appealed to Alex, like, she's taken her shoes off already. And Lisa snapped back with, ring your agent, which I thought was uh, <laughs> Perfect. great. It was great. Um, but it's this, I mean, Russell's very impressive in this, uh, in this task because what he does is he takes the rules of keep your elbows uh, on the table and your head in your hands and manages very athletically to keep everything on the table and swivel his whole body over the front of the table so he can see what's underneath. Yes, but, yes. He, the athlete in him came out that perhaps myself and Asim couldn't do, you know, do some of these moves. Um, well, you'd broken your back, of course. But it's interesting when you try and feel things with your feet. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, you realise it's not something you've, you've really ever done before. Yeah. Um, unless you're just looking for a sock. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, but even then, it's like saying we'll pick out the sock of a particular size. I mean, it's very hard to. It's very tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Well, um, there was a rogue, a rogue banana in yours, unfortunately. There yeah. always is. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every task, there was a rogue banana. You, was there a banana rule? There was a, no fruit, so ah. you had still had a banana under there. You hadn't got rid of the banana with your feet, so you were disqualified. Now is probably a good time to say something that I saw in my garden up there. I actually saw a, um, uh, I actually saw a toucan in my garden, which I thought this is quite, you know, unusual. Then I realised it wasn't a toucan; it was a magpie eating a banana. <laughs> so, so my point is, I do have a sort of banana blindness, um, <laughs> and, uh, and which certainly when when if you, you, all you got to go with is your feet, and as yeah. as we know, there's no you, your toes don't have eyes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as the old cliche goes. Um, <laughs> I haven't got eyes in my toes, as my mother used to say. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's very easy to to, to miss a banana. Yeah, completely. And yeah, mm -hmm. that's the issue. I mean, Asim and Russell both did all right, but I think Asim managed to sort of shifty his way around to the front as well. But Lisa, mm. again, she kept it calm. She ordered it fine. She got rid of all mm. the fruit. Very, very impressive. The five points for Lisa, four points yeah. for Asim and Russell, uh, and naught points uh, for you. And Alice, the final points, uh, leaving Alice and Russell tied at the top. Uh, and they had to do a tie break task, which was spin round as many times uh, as you can uh, and kick a football at the caravan. Most spins wins. If you miss the caravan, you're disqualified. And mm. Alice, Alice won 24 spins, 24 spins and a kick. Great. And of course, those, um, those tie break things we've all done for yes. the possibility of a tie break coming up. And there was a uh, there was an episode where because a lot a lot it's often very close to those shows and so yeah. those final live tasks are often very crucial yeah and I remember Alex saying to me at one point he said if you'd have just got such and such it might have been a, something like you know is it a grape in my mouth or not or one yeah. of those type of tasks if you just got that right so it's like a 50 50 thing then it would have gone to that the tie break and the tie break was and he said the tie break was one where you got it as quick as possible yeah. to get, uh, receive a text. Now, I've got a very old Nokia phone, <laughs> and I can show you now, because we're on Zoom, even though the yeah. users aren't. That, and so I simply texted myself, and it came straight through. <laughs> so it was it, it was actually, like, incredibly quick. So, yeah. the, you know, I would have won the, the uh, time break. Have been that one, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's lots of ifs and buts in this show. Yes. Um, do you, do you I remember? I don't think I did so well in, in uh, hitting a caravan with a football. I don't think. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember doing that one? Do you remember spinning around and kicking the football? I do remember that. Yeah, I don't remember where the football went, but I don't remember. I, I think. I, I think if I'd have, if it had been a huge triumph, it'd be very clear in my head. But because I've slightly blanked where the ball ended up, yeah, I don't think. I, I don't think it was super well, look, fantastic. Tim no, Tim, no one saw it, and we no. probably never will see it. So why, why don't no. you just say you spun around a hundred times and hit the caravan? I spun round a hundred times and hit the caravan. Wow, well done. You would have won. We we always have a few emails and tweets into the show, mm -hmm. uh, questions 
for our guest. Uh, we've got plenty for you here, Tim. So we'll do a few a few from here. Um, now, this is obviously something that comes up a lot in the emails and tweets. Uh, and, yes. and we will read out this from Justine in the Philippines. Uh, she says, hi, Ed and Tim. Uh, so, Tim, how long did it take for you to realise that the hook in the weighing task was on your person? <laughs> And do you still think about it every day since? I'd say personally, this is a highlight of the whole series for me when <laughs> that hook ended uh, up on your shirt. The, yeah, I mean, it, and, and the surprise actually, seeing how it got there was one of those things where I saw for the first time in, in the studio that that sort of slow-mo of it falling off and yeah. hooking onto the epaulette. Um, and I think Alex said it at the time, it was about 15 minutes. And that's true. I just was... Uh, he just wouldn't let on, and I was. Well, where have I? I had it here. What if? Where is it? And then, then eventually, you know, he, he he obviously saw long before I did, Alex. And eventually, he was kind of, you know, was was answering questions from me along the lines of, "Can you see it then?" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it it's is... not on me, is it? You know, all that because I'd literally looked everywhere as far as I could see. Yeah, I was anywhere near. I looked underneath those those um those wooden pallets and stuff i, I just yeah. looked everywhere so it, there was nowhere else but me i didn't think you know unless but it had of, been lifted up or something of course you don't assume that it's it's fallen and then hooked onto your jack like no way that no. you would not assume that but it's it's so good that's what taskmaster is all about those weird little moments that suddenly Absolutely. are yeah, overblown yeah. to become this huge storyline um yeah because right. it's 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 one of those things that's completely out of my control yeah completely, it was like <laughs> You know, any comedy that was involved in it was was not it not of my making at all. Yeah, it was just it, this this stuff just happened. You know, I love it when you know, and it's true. In fact, just to be uh, quite general, being being a human generally mm. means that comedy kind of does follow you around, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. If you if you can look for it, I mean, every I think some people think that oh, you know, so this person's funny or that person, but, but everyone's actually funny. It's funny, you know, funny stuff happens to all of us, doesn't it? Yeah, we've all got the tools. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's have this email from Joe in London. Uh, Hi, Tim and Ed. I have a question about Tim's swearing. Do you really try to avoid swearing like you did on the show in your everyday life? Uh, and do you say the same alternatives, brackets, flippers, bums on seats, do me a favour, etc., or is it different every time? Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Well, uh, the truth is, I've got to be completely honest about it, that I do swear using all the traditional rudies. Um, but I, but it doesn't tend to happen. I don't do it in my act because my act is very s silly. Yeah. Um, it t the time it tends to happen is this sort of frustration with myself. I, d I never swear at anybody else, and, um, unless that's a new thing that's going to start happening in my life. But, <laughs> so, so it would be an example would be, you know, someone's, uh, you know, a car's waiting for you outside. I'm just about to go out and I can't find, you know, my door keys or something yes. like that. Yeah, yeah, that sort of that kind of frustration thing of well, you know, and then I get frustrated. Well, why have you? You knew you were leaving at this point. You, you know, da -da -da, whatever. So no, I, I, I can't claim to be someone who doesn't swear. That's just really nonsense. It's just yeah. that I, uh, I, I mean, I did play up to the <laughs> thing slightly that that is because my act is like that. But I do say flippers and bums on seats and things in, you know, oh, flippers. <laughs> you know. I think it's more inventive. I like flippers. I occasionally have, uh, when I've been very angry, I start with flippers and then end with something really rude. And I think, that's where on earth have I said that for? That's a weird, why did I bother with flippers? Yeah. Flipping flipper, flip, flip. <laughs> <laughs> we had a tweet here uh, from someone called uh, CJ, CJ a hero, I think is the, the tweet name. I don't, I don't know what that means. How does he think uh, his brother Jeremy would do if he was on the show? What a good question. I, I don't I don't know actually how he'd uh, approach it. I think he'd uh, yeah. I mean, it's like I was saying earlier. You do have to make decisions quite quickly, and I think he would yeah. probably. He, you know, he's, he's he's competitive. Is he competitive? He wants it. He wouldn't like to make mistakes. Uh, I don't know. It may not it may not be his thing. He may he may find the whole lack of of control and preparation frightening. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it does, it does lend itself to people who are, who are comics, I suppose. But um, uh, I don't know. I actually don't know. It'd be fascinating to watch. Well, that. look, they, they do the New, Year's, the New Year's treat now on Taskmaster where they get people who aren't necessarily comedians on uh, to do one mm. episode. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll get yeah, to find maybe, that one yeah. day. Yeah, maybe, yeah. 
Um, one final question. Uh, yes. Uh, from Soren on Twitter. Uh, I really want to know what it feels like to fall victim to a solo task, especially uh, when you come up with a great tracksuit pun and it doesn't get enough credit. <laughs> Well, I, I, I loved the, the, uh, that surprise of, uh, yes, you were the only one who we did this with. That, yeah. that, you know, I, it makes you feel a bit special when, when Alex reveals that moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was pleased, to be honest with you, I, I was, what I was pleased about with the, the tracksuit pun thing is that, that I could easily have gone for stationary, stationary, which is what a lot of people thought I would go for. And, yes. I, and I, I could, so I was actually just pleased I hadn't gone for that. that I, you know yeah because, that would be uh, the that would be the the slightly the subtext of disappointment there for a comedian as if everyone guesses it right everyone guesses the same thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've noticed that the uh, there's a bit in that task as well where i'm wearing a, a some sort of um file on my head and, yes and pushing my nose up in a sort of slightly like uh, jim carrey and the grinch sort of look yeah um and there's a bit, there's a flap across my face and you can sort of open it up. And I sort of open it up like, morning. And yeah. that, I noticed someone had put that out as some kind of uh, meme. What do you call it's it? A G- it's a GIF. A GIF. Uh, a GIF? A, yes, yes, it's a it? GIF. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I used it to publicize your appearance on the show. It's a Is great, that right? Yeah, yeah, it's I, a I, great I GIF. It's floating around now and again. I like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for coming on the on the Taskmaster podcast, Tim. You are, of course, uh, on tour at the moment. You're just about to finish, actually. You've got a few more shows left of your few plas- more shows plastic, plastic Elvis. Plastic Elvis. Yeah, Plastic Elvis. That's an Elvis tribute show. It's not really a comedy show. It's me doing my uh, my best impression that I can do of Elvis Presley, who's my uh, big hero in uh, show business. Um, and as I understand it, I'm the, I think I'm, the only person doing an Elvis tribute act, I think. I'm not sure. It's, I think it's an yeah. original idea of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's and great he... fun. So, uh, I mean, I do, you know, we have a live band and everything. Five people in the, in the band who are amazing. And, you oh, know, amazing. So it's, it's a bit of a vanity project, really, Ed, if I'm honest. No, it's great. We've all got them. Uh, you can go to timvine.com uh, for more details about Tim's uh, touring and stuff like that. I wasn't telling you to go to timvine.com, Tim. <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, thank you. I'll have a look at that. <laughs> Tim, we always ask our guests on the podcast to rate their experience on the podcast between one and five points in the style of the Taskmaster. Please, uh, will you now rate this podcast between one and five points? I'm going to say that uh, it it started really, really well, and then it sort of got a bit better in the middle, Yeah. and then at the end, it went back to being really, really well, and yeah. then at the very end, it suddenly got even better than it had been throughout the entire five points yay five points thank you very much tim and thank you very much for coming on the podcast thank you for having me bye bye there we are thank you so much to tim for coming on Uh, absolutely love talking to tim always what a lovely lovely funny man uh we'll be back next week of course chatting uh about taskmaster series six episode two and we'll be talking to Greg Jenner. Greg Jenner. We've been trying to get Greg Jenner on this podcast for a while. He's very up for it. Um, He is a Taskmaster mega fan. He's brilliant. You'll know Greg Jenner. He's a historian, but dabbles in the world of comedy as well as a writer. And he's been part of the Horrible Histories team for a long time. And he does a brilliant podcast called You're Dead to Me, which is educational and funny. And I've done it twice, so I should know. So do go and listen to that uh, in advance. But most importantly, go and watch Series 6, Episode 2. Come back here and we will be talking about it next week. Emails to taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks very much for listening. Goodbye. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.